Hey there Groundhogs Garage viewers, welcome back to the channel. Today um, I am starting a video process of swapping the engines and transmissions. Actually I'm taking the engine out of this one, engine and transmission out of this one and putting it in this one. The reason being this one, uh, the transmission only works in first and second gear. This one has a working engine and transmission but it was wrecked in that the lady that owned it hit a guardrail and they told it. So there's nothing wrong with this drive train. This one is kind of questionable. Um, first the transmission issue and then I think we might have an oil burning problem too. So uh, rather than just swapping the transmission I'm just doing the whole thing. Most of the front end, <laughs> this is kind of hard, <laughs> most of the front end was out of this one anyway. So what you see isn't much different than how I got it. Um, so it's pretty much ready to go. So I'm going to start disassembling the uh, keeper and pulling the front end off or as much as I need to, yanking the engine and transmission out of that, getting it out of the way, and then pretty much just pulling this and dropping it in here. So I thought I'd bring you along because Guys seem to like engine swaps. They like to watch other people suffer. So stick around, and uh, I'll go as long as I can go. I may uh, in the mean I may in the meantime just uh, I'm pulling some body panels off of this one too. Um, I've got the uh, front fenders ready to come off, or at least the one uh, the one you can see there. It's in pretty nice shape. The other side's wrecked, so I'm going to yank those off anyway. Probably make the process a little easier. So, uh, stick around. Uh, see? A little oily, but you can see the spray pattern and at least uh, see where the injectors are hitting the top of the dome there. I've become a big believer in LS engines. If you haven't replaced your uh, intake gaskets on 100,000 miles, um, you probably should do so. Because uh, if you're going to have uh, money light issues, um, or rough running or anything like that. You want to make sure your intake gaskets are in good shape because they do get hard, they do collapse, they do leak air. So I'm going to stuff some paper towels into the combustion chambers there, or the, uh, I'm sorry, the intake uh, chambers and uh, we'll get this cleaned up and I'll tape it off. Okay, we've got the uh, good engine combo all cleaned up. I'm going to tape off the ports there and uh, then we'll start disassembling uh, the keeper. But I thought I'd give you a, a after look here. There's no point in not cleaning that up a little bit. So I decided to start prepping this one to take the engine out. Got the intake off. Um, I've got most of it, or at least a portion of it, disconnected. Um, once I get the radiator out and the fan shroud and get that stuff off of there, I get the water pump off and I think I can just kind of peel everything to the side to get the engine out and I won't have to disconnect these hoses, I don't think, but maybe I will. And uh, the power steering pump and alternator, I can just take that whole bracket assembly off maybe and set it off to the side. Find out soon enough. All right, I'm getting ready to take the valley pan off, and uh, we hear about it a lot. I haven't seen it. This is my first time, but this one is full of water. So uh, if you ever wonder why your knock sensor quits working, now you know. It fills up with water and rusts away, and there you go. This one was still pretty dry. I'm kind of curious as what I'm going to see when I pop this thing off of here, how well it's been maintained. Well, I wasn't disappointed. It's a sludge monster. Um, 
Let's see, I got a here. Hold on a second. Here's a uh, gasket scraper. Let's see what happens here. Oh, yeah, that's nice. Yeah, definitely uh, not a well maintained motor. Almost forgot to show you the knock sensors. So, front port nice and clean, back port not so clean, pretty rough. So we're moving along here. Uh, I've got a lot of the engine detached and uh, I came in with a, I have a problem now. <laughs> this is a one ton uh, engine lift and the boom isn't long enough. So um, somebody was kind enough to let me use this and, and unfortunately it's not going to work. So, um, but as you can see, the, the that's about as far in as it'll go because it starts hitting the bumper and the hoist the engine chain is still on the front of the nose of the engine and the minute I try to lift it up a little bit um, it pulls the, the hoist in against the uh, bumper of my truck so <clears throat> we're gonna have to swap that out with a slightly larger one and we will get that done in three two one and there we are. We have a, another couple extra inches. <laughs> and there's a joke in there somewhere. And I'm just going to leave it there. But now the chain is out over the engine. And I've already lifted it up to get the weight off the motor mounts. And it lifts it without pulling the, the hoist in. So we will get this running in a couple days. Okay, I'm babbling. Thanks for watching. Smash that like button, subscribe down below, and uh, hope to see you again soon.